Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror film, Aegon. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. While diving underwater, Paul finds an ancient abyss. He enters and swipes his hand across the walls, finding gold underneath the dirt. Suddenly, a mermaid appears beside him. The mermaid removes his mask. She then screams and reveals her horrifying jagged teeth. Paul wakes up and realizes it was a nightmare. Beside him, his girlfriend Barbara also wakes up. Barbara asks him if it is a new nightmare, but he tells her that it is the same one that he has had for weeks now. Barbara tells him to relax and starts tongue massaging him. She tells him that he shouldn't worry since everything he touches turns to gold. Paul is suddenly reminded of his dream about the gold in the abyss. Barbara starts going down on Paul to peel his yummy banana. But Paul is unsettled because of the nightmare. Barbara gets frustrated and stops kissing him. They get into an argument. Paul opens his laptop to check on their stock investments. Barbara tells him to relax and enjoy their time on a yacht just off the Spanish coast. Barbara ends up grabbing his laptop and running out of the room as Paul runs after her. On the yacht deck, Paul runs into his friend, Vicky, and her husband. He watches as Barbara throws his laptop into the water. Paul is outraged since he hasn't backed up his files yet. Vicky and her husband just watch as the young couple continues fighting. The group hears a choir singing in the village of Mboka nearby. Vicky leaves to get changed below. Barbara then notices a storm brewing over the village. Vicky's husband secures everything on the deck, while Barbara helps. The sails start shaking in the wind, and the storm clouds quickly move to their location. Barbara lifts the anchor, and the husband starts steering the yacht away from the storm. The husband tries to steer away from the large rock behind them, but the waves are too strong, and the ship gets grounded on the rock. The crash causes the ship to break below deck, injuring Vicky, who went to change her clothes. The husband hears Vicky scream, and goes to help her. He sees Vicky's foot stuck in the hole made by the crash, but cannot get her loose. Paul and Barbara try to help, but cannot do anything. Paul radios for help, but there is no signal. Vicky's husband gives Paul a flare, so that they can signal the villagers from Mboka. Paul shoots the flare, but nobody is there to see it. Paul returns and tells Vicky's husband that he has to go to the village to get help. He and Barbara take the raft and head for the village. Meanwhile, the blood from Vicky's wound drips down below the boat. The raft hits a rock and gets punctured. They struggle to fix it, but cannot find anything to patch the hole. Back in the yacht, Vicky feels something in the water. Her husband takes a flashlight, but cannot see anything in the bloody and murky water. The water stirs and Vicky cries out in pain. Her husband grabs a gun and shoots the water. Paul and Barbara overhear the gunshot, but decide to continue to the village. Because of the hole in the raft, they dump the motor to make the raft lighter. They reach the harbor and look for help. But the streets are empty. Suddenly, they hear the choir singing and head to the church. They arrive, and Paul notices the symbol in his dreams on display above the church doors. They enter the church after no one responds to their knocking. Barbara sees a gruesome-looking gold figure on the walls and wonders what kind of church this is. A priest suddenly arrives, and the couple asks for help. They go to the harbor, and the priest gets the strange men in the boat nearby to help rescue Vicky and her husband. The priest tells Paul and Barbara that one of them has to stay to notify the police. Barbara ends up staying, while Paul heads for the yacht. While preparing for departure, Paul gets knocked down by a man on the boat and injures his hand on a fishing hook. He pulls the hook out, and they set sail. Back on land, the priest informs Barbara about a working telephone in the hotel nearby. While the priest points her to the hotel's direction, Barbara notices that his hands are webbed. She hurriedly leaves and runs into suspicious-looking villagers on her way to the hotel. She enters the hotel and asks the concierge for the telephone. He doesn't respond, and Barbara gets frustrated. She grabs the phone herself, but the concierge stops her with his deformed hands. She is about to leave the hotel when the priest appears behind her. The priest suddenly grabs her from the back while the concierge chokes her. Meanwhile, Paul reaches the yacht. He boards, but cannot find Vicky and her husband inside. He returns to the harbor. The priest lies and tells him that Barbara has left for the nearest police station, 50 kilometers away. So Paul heads to the hotel to wait for her. Paul finds Barbara's lighter on the desk and takes it. He asks for a room. When the concierge turns around to grab the key, Paul notices gills on the concierge's neck. Paul gets the key and enters his room upstairs. He turns on the light, but it is broken. He turns on the bathroom light and sees the disgusting state of the bathroom. The faucet and the bed are also dirty. 
He tries to call the lobby, but the phone is broken. While Paul is sitting on a chair, Barbara suddenly enters the room and stands by the window. He approaches her, but when she turns around, it is revealed that she is not Barbara, but the mermaid from his dreams. She screams at him, and tentacles emerge from her mouth. Paul wakes up from his nightmare. Paul sees the villagers gathering in the rain outside. One of them notices him and points at him. Freaked out, Paul tries to lock the door, but the lock is broken. He manages to change the locks before the villagers start trying to open his door. Paul breaks into the adjacent room right as the villagers force his door open. He closes the door behind him and blocks it with a cabinet, but the door beside him also opens. Paul cannot hold back the villagers and is forced to jump out the window into the workshop below. He peeks out of the door and sees a black car pull up. The villagers enter the room and Paul hides. While hiding, he finds human skins on a rack. He finds Vicky's husband's mutilated corpse and screams, causing the villagers to find him. He pours gas over the floor and sets it on fire. Paul manages to hide successfully and later pretends to be one of the villagers to leave the workshop. In an alley, he runs into a dirty, messy man known as Mr. Messy. Paul quickly silences him and they hide together. A villager crawls past them using his deformed hands. Paul asks Mr. Messy why the villagers killed his friends. Mr. Messy tells him that they need their skins. Paul discovers that two women were killed and he starts worrying about Barbara and Vicky. Mr. Messy tells Paul about the secret of Mboka. The village suffered in the past as local fishermen could not find fish to catch anymore. They prayed for help, but none came. One day, a ship captain entered the church and told the villagers about a great god that supplies gold and fish. Later that night, the captain throws a golden artifact into the sea and summons his new god. Thanks to the new god, Mboka becomes rich in fish and gold. Mr. Messy hands a gold figurine to his father, but his father merely throws it back into the sea. Meanwhile, the rest of the villagers destroy all remnants of Christianity in the village. The captain, who has now become a priest, forces everyone to worship Dagon, their new god. Eventually, Dagon starts requesting sacrifices. Mr. Messi's father is chosen, and Mr. Messi is forced to watch when his father is sacrificed. Mr. Messi is forced to cast aside his religion and worship Dagon instead. Back in the present, Paul wonders why Mr. Messi hasn't been killed yet. Mr. Messi tells him that it is because the villagers think he is crazy, Paul tells Mr. Messi that he needs a car, but learns that the only car in the village belongs to the mayor, who is a direct descendant of the captain. Before attempting to steal the car, Paul asks why the people in the village are all deformed. Mr. Messi reveals that they are changing to go into the sea and live with Dagon. Mr. Messi acts drunk and lures the guards away from the car. Paul manages to sneakily enter the car. He tries to hotwire the car and get the engine running, but he accidentally honks the car's horn. This alerts the guards, and Paul escapes into the mayor's mansion while the guards chase him. He runs upstairs and hides in a room. There, Paul is shocked to find the mermaid from his dreams sitting on the bed in front of him. A guard knocks on the door, but she reassures him that everything is all right and dismisses him, saving Paul from getting caught. Paul sits on the bed and tells her that he has been dreaming of her. The mermaid introduces herself as Mermaid Sexy and tells Paul that she has been waiting for him for long and sexily. She kisses Paul, who pretends to resist at first, but eventually, he kisses her back, despite her stinking smell. He opens her shirt, but stops when he feels gills on her stomach. He takes off the blankets, and is shocked to find tentacles, instead of legs. In fear, he runs out despite her telling him to stay. Paul exits the house, but runs into a guard. Paul headbutts and kicks him in the butt, then runs his ass away. He returns to get the keys, but the guard grabs him, and they both fall down the stairs. After hitting the guard on the head with his phone, Paul enters the car. More villagers arrive, while Mermaid Sexy calls Paul from the balcony. Villagers start piling on the car, but Paul manages to drive away. Shortly after, Paul runs over some villagers and crashes, causing one of the wheels to break. Paul desperately tries to fix it, but hands emerge from under the car and stop him. Paul grabs the loose hubcap and uses it to free himself. He runs away and hides in a shack nearby. Inside, he watches, as the villagers run past the shack. Paul suddenly hears a noise behind, but it is only a frog. Behind him, a boy starts screaming and revealing Paul's location to the villagers. He silences the boy, but a man emerges from the waters. The man grabs Paul with his tentacles and slams Paul into the wall. The man tries to drown Paul in a toilet, but Paul manages to free himself by slamming the toilet tank cover over the man's head. The villagers enter the shack, and Paul runs away. But soon, he gets caught by a net. 
Paul wakes up and is surprised to see Barbara beside him. Mr. Messi also enters and tells them that he is a prisoner too. Barbara shows Paul that Vicky is also alive. But Vicky is delirious. Vicky shows them her injured leg and tells them that someone's hormone is inside her. Mr. Messi explains that Dagon has impregnated Vicky now. Barbara tells Paul to kill her if she ever gets raped and impregnated by Dagon. They suddenly hear villagers outside and Paul hides beside the door. When the priest enters, Paul punches him and leaps out of the cage. He tries to hit the priest, but is stopped by the village butcher, who points a knife at him. Mr. Messi and Barbara also jump out and fight. Vicky also leaves the cage, but they lose the fight and get restrained. The priest tells them that they must all serve their god, but due to its hormone humiliation, Vicky grabs the knife and kills herself by stabbing herself in the stomach. Later, the other villagers take Barbara away, while Paul and Mr. Messi are tied up in the workshop. Mr. Messi spits at the priest's face, then Paul tries to offer them money in exchange for their freedom. However, the priest tells them that they are richer, thanks to Dagon's gold. The priest grabs a knife and says a prayer while the two villagers restrain Mr. Messi. Paul apologizes for bringing Mr. Messi into his mess. But Mr. Messi thanks him for reminding him of who he really is. Mr. Messi starts praying, and the priest cuts his neck and eyes. Paul joins Mr. Messi in prayer, while Mr. Messi's flesh gets ripped off. Mr. Messi dies shortly after. The villagers then move to Paul. The priest cuts Paul's neck, but Mermaid Sexy enters and stops them. Mermaid Sexy tells Paul that he has to stay with her to live. Paul asks if Barbara will be spared if he stays, but she tells him that she will be sacrificed too, and impregnated by Dagon too. Mermaid Sexy tries to convince Paul to forget about Barbara, but he doesn't listen. Mermaid Sexy tells him that it is his destiny to be with her. She leaves and tells the villagers to free Paul and prepare a wedding ceremony for them. Paul is freed, but he grabs a knife and stabs the villagers. The priest gets his stomach cut open and dies soon. Paul grabs a barrel of gasoline and heads to the church to burn it down. However, he finds a secret passage inside and enters it instead. Inside a ritual chamber, Mermaid Sexy marks Barbara's body with a knife to prepare for the sacrifice. She then starts chanting. The villagers, who are wearing the human skins as masks, also start chanting. The villagers raise Barbara over an open pit and her blood drips to the water below. Mermaid Sexy throws the golden artifact that the captain used to summon Dagon into the pit. The water stirs, and they start lowering Barbara. Behind the villagers, Paul enters through the hidden passageway. He douses them in gas and sets them on fire. The commotion causes the villagers to let go of the chain, and Barbara falls into the water. Paul manages to pull Barbara back up, but she tells him to kill her, revealing that Dagon has already impregnated her. Dagon emerges from the water and pulls Barbara down. Her arms are ripped off, and she falls into the water. The villagers beat Paul up, but Mermaid Sexy tells them to stop. The mayor arrives and beats Paul with his cane. Mermaid Sexy stops him and lifts Paul's shirt, revealing the gills are starting to form on his stomach. The mayor stops and tells Paul that he has been looking for him. Paul learns that he is a direct descendant of the captain. Apparently, Paul's mother was the mayor's wife. The mayor removes his mask and reveals his horrifying face. The mayor says that Paul is his son. Paul panics and runs away with the gas can. Mermaid Sexy tells him that she is also the daughter of the mayor. She tells Paul that this is his destiny and reminds him of his dreams. But Paul still refuses to believe them. When Mermaid Sexy calls Paul her brother and future lover, Paul lights himself on fire, trying to escape the hormone madness. He screams in pain, while Mermaid Sexy removes her robes and rushes to help. They fall into the pit together, and the fires are extinguished. Paul bleeds from his gills, but eventually realizes that he can breathe underwater. While Paul is surprised, Mermaid Sexy guides him into swimming with her. He follows her, and they head to the ancient abyss, seen in the opening scene together, indicating that Paul has already begun to accept his destiny. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.